Welcome back to part two of Japanese Performance Part. Our first company, which I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but I call it Defi, is a gauge company. They make automotive gauges and they've been making them for a while and they look awesome. Uh, I remember when I first found out about Defi, they had a Defi D-Link system and it, what it was, was you had the gauge connected to this control unit and the control unit connected to the gauges. But you were, you were able to adjust parameters with the control unit like lighting and steps and um, just all kinds of different functions. So it made it stand out from the typical gauge. Um, I, have, I personally have the Defi Racer Gauge Series and it's just a gauge and a sensor and it does a great job. But this company has been putting out all types of different gauges and all types of products gauge related and it's a really good company and I like it. All right, we're moving on to the next company, which is OS Gaiken. I know I butchered that one. I apologize. Uh, so OS Gaiken, OS Gaiken. Okay, so OS Gaiken, starting in the early 1960s, Masharua Okazaki set out on a mission to build high-performance Japanese race engines to compete with the championship-winning European offerings of the time. Armed only with a pure passion of motorsports and an intimate ability to absorb information, he basically took things apart in his garage, filled out how they figured out how they worked, and designed improvements to increase performance. Now, my experience with OS Gaiken has always been associated to clutches. They have always they've been in the game in clutches for a long time, but they've always been known to cost a pretty penny. So if you're running an OS Gaiken clutch, it meant that you shelled out some cash and you had a great, great clutch from what I hear. Um, another thing too is that they look really cool. If you go on a website, they're like, almost look like art. I think they're pretty neat clutches. So really popular company, puts out great products, fun facts. The next company is pretty popular, Tian. The company name Tian was named after a combination of the first two letters, T-E in technical and I-N in innovation. Originally, their first step was OEM production based on high reliability and engineering skills. And in 1990, Tian went on to produce their own brand products, mainly sport shock absorbers. Now Tian for me, I've owned a few Tian coilovers and springs and really popular. I'm sure you guys have owned them as well. But one of the things that I remember about Tian is about a decade ago, I remember going to a car meet and somebody showed up and they had an EDFC controller and that's an electronic dampening uh, force controller. And essentially what it was, was that they had a specific setup where you could adjust the dampener inside your car. Now that's pretty popular now, like if you go into more a lot of cars, you could adjust your dampener to comfort, soft, sport, and all that. But this was neat because they didn't have any of that for, for just mainstream. You could buy the kit and the coilovers and put it on a car, the, the specific applications that they had it for. But I thought that was really neat, and um, I've always liked TN, and, uh, and they're still doing great things. Okay, going to uh, the next company is going to be ARC, A-R-C. ARC International, based in Japan, manufactures some of the highest quality intercoolers, radiators, exhaust systems, oil coolers, and around the world. Now, I've never owned any ARC products, but I have seen them in car shows. We're talking about, like, you know, those cars that are just look beautiful, like, you know, engine bay looks clean, wire tuck, just gorgeous, fresh paint, you know, show quality. Now, I've seen a lot of ARC uh, intakes on those cars and so I decided I think they look pretty cool so one time I, I went to go look him up and this was in the past and they were so expensive and I was like oh man that's that's a lot so that is my experience with ARC our next company slash shops are going to be body kits now that holds a special place in our heart because if you remember the the beginning of the tuner scene there was body kits everywhere Okay, so let's go ahead and start with our first body kit company, and that's gonna be Veilside. Now, if you remember in Fast and Furious 1, Don Toretto's RX-7, the red one, that had a Veilside body kit. Looked pretty cool, I still like it. Okay, so our next uh, body kit company is going to be Rocket Bunny. Now, Rocket Bunny is still popular till today, and uh, still kicking butt out there. 
a lot of YouTubers, a lot of famous shops are putting Rocket Bunny kits and new cars, old cars. Just really cool company overall. Our sec third one is going to be Liberty Walk. Now, Liberty Walk is really cool. I, I, in my personal opinion, I believe they got a big, their, their, their viral video photo was of the Liberty Walk 458. I think that looks really cool. I know the Ferrari purists out there are very angry and they're tearing their hair out, but I think it looks great. So, all right, so our fourth company is gonna be Redox. Now Redox is mostly specializes in the Supra. Um, I think the Redox Supra parts or body kit parts are really cool. Gives the Supra that aggressive look uh, without being too wild and disproportionate. Um, so really cool. And uh, I think it's a really neat company. Okay, I know I've missed some body kit companies out there, but those are the main four ones I wanted to talk about. They're all, I know that they're all Japanese companies, so fits into our video. All right, moving on. So we can't end this video without naming Japanese famous manufacturing performance parts. That's like, yeah, we're talking about the people who make the cars. Of course, they're going to offer their own version of performance parts. And the first one we're going to start off is we're going to start off with Mugen. Now, Mugen was initially special parts for motocross bikes. I didn't know that. I learned that as well. And as Honda started to expand from their biking business, because we all know that Honda started off with bikes or scooters um, into cars, then Mugen started to specialize in cars. And as we all know, Mugen parts are hard to come and expensive and cool. Okay, the next one is TRD, which is known as Toyota Racing Development. Originally called Toyota Sports Corner, um, they were a group and they were racing in all sorts of events with Toyotas. And as they were racing with, within their competitors, they were adjusting and, and they were doing some modifications to existing parts so they could compete for and they could be more reliable in races. And then later on, that spun off into TRD and then they started providing performance parts for the Toyota lineup. The next one is going to be Nismo and quite the similar history. They started off racing around the world as well in different series, different competitions. And they were modifying their cars as well. And later on, as they started to gain, uh, win significant races and attention, and they garnered global attention, uh, they later started to develop a, a, a lineup, a performance parts lineup for the Nissan cars, uh, the manufactured cars that they are producing. So really fun. Okay, this concludes part two of Japanese performance parts. Hope you guys liked these videos. We had a lot of fun making them. And hope you guys are staying busy during these wild times. And don't forget to punch that like and subscribe button. And we'll see you soon.